Hi, I'm Peter Carmichael, director of the Civil War Institute here at Gettysburg College. I'm also a member of the history department. And in partnership with David Bruce Smith's Grateful American Foundation, I'm here to present many biographies of soldiers that fought at Gettysburg. Today, I'm gonna to talk about John Partington and his wife, Sarah Partington. They are both from Detroit, Michigan. John joined the 24th Michigan, which would become part of the famous Iron Brigade in the summer of 1862 when he left uh, he left Sarah in a very difficult financial situation. She had a child to care for. In fact, so difficult that she threatened to get a job outside of the house. When John learned of this, he flew into a rage and he promised to desert if she in fact did not relent. And she did. And John then turned and looked to the army as a way to improve himself morally. Uh, he, before the war, had had a problem with the bottle. He drank a lot and he often would leave in the middle of the night, come home, after his carousing and felt very guilty about it. We don't know what happened in those evenings, but that guilt um, actually permeated his letters while he was in the army. He asked Sarah for uh, forgiveness for what he had done. Dear Sarah, if I could recall those nights, I would sacrifice my right hand. But you will forgive me, won't you, dear? And I make a faithful promise before God, if I ever get back to you, I will live a different life. Well, he in fact did become a different man. He gave up the bottle, picked up the Bible, and he became a very dependable, reliable soldier in the Army of the Potomac. He saw fighting at Fredericksburg and survived that, although he was shaken badly by what he had endured. And then July 1st, here at Gettysburg, part of the 24th Michigan, they confronted a frontal attack by the 26th North Carolina, more than 900 men in that Southern regiment. One of Partington's comrades described the fighting that occurred directly behind me and those open woods. Fighting in the woods lasted over an hour. Standing 20 paces from the Rebs, we fired continuous volleys. I killed 14 Rebs, shot the one who killed John Partington. Partington was one of nearly 2,200 Union and Confederate soldiers killed and wounded in the woods behind me, a woodlot that covered no more than 35 acres. Well, as you can imagine, feelings of dread overcame Sarah as the letters from John stopped coming. She then ultimately received a letter from the regimental chaplain who explained that he wasn't sure where John's whereabouts were because the dead on the battlefield had laid on the field for more than two days. It was impossible to identify them. John was ultimately removed to the National Cemetery and buried in an unmarked grave. But John gave his life for this nation and he understood that very clearly and wrote with great eloquence about it to his wife, Sarah. Not as I love you less, he wrote to Sarah, than the good old flag, but I love that next to you and will stick by it as long as she waves. For it is the only flag of the free and will triumph over all other rags that are afloat against us now and forever. 